Over the last decade, ULIP agents have been replaced by mostly mutual fund agents. They primarily work via two factors, greed and fear. Give you a FOMO, take you away from other alternate investments in the name of compounding. That too, a half-baked formula. And most people will realize that after 10, 15, 20 years only. We'll visit that formula with two practical insights in the nugget section today. Hi everyone, welcome to the update of 6 September. A day of fear across the Dalal Street. Bajaj Finance was down in last few days when markets were good. Today in bad market it was up. SBI was singled out today for the harshest punishment. It has earned a downgrade from Goldman Sachs. The target is 40 points below the closing price, about 740. Now this is something I have talked about in the past two days. HPCL, BPCL shares fell today. That's because government is now finally considering a fuel price cut. And remember, I've been saying that price cut will come, but it will be a consolation price kind of thing. The price cut will not be very deep. Right now, the trigger could be vehicle sales. In that case, this will be followed by a drop in interest rates, maybe 25 to 50 basis points. So in the bad markets today, chemicals was the sector which performed best. The second sector that performed was Tata Technologies driven integrated hardware and software. Apparently Tata Technologies has got an upgrade that price has moved from 1000 to 1113 in double quick time. The target is close to 1250 or 1300. Note that these are pure targets given to Tata Technologies. There is no data to back that. Bad day for the market. The streets were completely dominated by beers today. Nifty is firmly in the grip of beers third straight day down. Today, Bank Nifty also fell. Now there was no big gap down today because Gift Nifty was also indicating a gap up actually small one. Market suddenly fell after 9.30 and then they never recovered. Bank Nifty also, it actually had two spells of fall. Today the trading range was good 360 points or 1.5%. Starting at the top of the day, we fell literally to 24,850. That's nearly 300 points in the first hour of trade itself. After that also Nifty was range bound but in 150 points. That's lot better the trading range than the usual ones of 30-40 points. Let's check Bank Nifty. The trading range today was huge, 900 points. So volatility is back on Bank Nifty. However, it was a downward kind of journey only. There were no huge towers coming down suddenly or a big fall after which there was a huge recovery. All indices were in deep red today. Nifty, Bank Nifty 1.17 and 1.75%. IT fell 1%. Energy 1.6%. Next 50 1.36%. Auto has been red whole week, all five days. Now India's Forex reserves rose to all time highs. I don't typically like the term Forex reserves in this context because India is not a state surplus country. All the dollars that India owns are dollars that typically FII's investors, exporters have brought in, but most of them need to go out at some point of time. Now Godfrey Phillips has been on fire whole month. Today also it was up 11%. The news was finally out. There is a 2 is to 1 bonus issue coming up. For every 1 share you hold, you will get 2 new shares. You will end up with 3. This month itself, Godfrey Phillips has gone up 75%. So take the risk of buying now for the bonus with caution. On the other side of the world, Bitcoin has been going down. In last 6 months, it has corrected 15%. FI is today sold, DI is bought. This data is as of yesterday. The data is coming very late these days. Gold was up a little, silver was up 2%. Reliance GDR is still looking weak. I have just refreshed the US data. Markets have opened in the red only. Apple is slightly up because the Apple event is coming up. Huge anticipation. Today 43 stocks were down, only 7 were up. Bajaj Finance, Asian Paints, JSW Steel, LTI Mindtree, Divis Lab. Reliance continues to be at the bottom. Note here we are talking about contribution to today's fall. SBI was the next because of the downgrade. ICICI Bank was next followed by Infosys ITC. SBI and Access Bank are in the maximum fear zone now. Now strangely while Goldman Sachs gave a downgrade to SBI, it gave an upgrade to SBI cards which was up 4.29%. Also stocks which were up were Marico, Zomato, Pedilite, Jindal Steel. But I think retail was not expecting such a fall. Most stocks opened at the higher part of the day only. No major bad news from US also overnight. The feeling I have is FII started the fall. They sold major quantity in most of the big stocks and the markets came crashing down in the first one, one and a half, two hours. And then 
the interest got lost from most participants that is where they started buying again in today's market also hul made a new 52 week high trading range was 1.2 percent look at reliance 66 rupees or 2.25 percent trading range starting literally at the highest point of the day closing literally at the lowest point of the day let's check the rsi for reliance ones comfortable right now neither overbought nor oversold let's check airtel also once so airtel has come out from the overbought zone based upon the past history i don't think it will stop here it probably will go through another two three days of correction that has been the past trend at least for last few months look at sbi's volumes 280 percent this is above normal zone lnt 53 percent above normal volumes banks also are not very different started at the top of the day then came down most banks close towards the lower point of the day bajaj finance was the only stock which was in bear territory yesterday it started at the bottom and then went up hgfc today also was in a 10 rupee range only not much defense stocks also most of the names that have been running for the last couple of days musgaon dock corrected four percent pl two and a half percent hl two percent Kochi in shipyard two and a half percent the order euphoria seems to be getting over metals i've been talking about vedanta's upcoming dividend 40 percent higher volumes the stock was down only zomato was up in today's market it has been correcting on good days ec has been down most of this week not looking good at all nothing good in the power sector power as well as oil good profit booking in all power stocks continues on high volumes same with the oil companies fantastic volumes consumption pack is usually defensive in markets like today even on 4th of june consumption pack was up today also food and tobacco pack was looking okay aerospace and defense down two percent on good volumes auto everything down beverage is corrected asian paints and pit light were up but srf was down this sector will celebrate crude prices till they are low yesterday few new mines were auctioned gmdc got one it was up two percent deep cuts in construction engineering continue cement down huge sell-off in insurance that's despite the gst team's meeting coming up to consider the reduction in gst for insurance huge profit booking in investment banking a lot of companies immediately have come out of the green zone heavy machinery hasn't gone anywhere yet it was down siemens abb are more than 20 percent away from 52 week high now funny day for my trades i bought mrs vectors today I bought it for the long term that's because there was a news of qip i thought that the stock will go up it went up nearly 15 percent in that day i sold it off then it corrected a bit i'll not think again next week what to do with the stock but for now booked intraday profits that will be taxed at 33 percent if you are on social media then probably like me you would be seeing five reels or forwards every day about the power of compounding why it doesn't make any sense to buy houses you might have heard people say what if you bought asian paints or reliance 25 years back what if your grandfather invested in this stock 30 years back you would have been karodpati by now all those things are not technically wrong but not fully right either in today's nugget section we'll try and demystify that part a little we'll take two examples one is the most prominent one today these days lot of influencers especially the ones who have made a lot of money they say don't buy home rent it and the sip philosophy of putting money into sip regularly into something like a mutual fund or etf every month for years now some of the factors we need to consider and there will be an excel demo soon interest rates on the investment you are making taxation rate on the returns you will get for example on fds the tax is 33 percent stcg is typically 20 percent ltcg is 12 and a half percent the realistic inflation rate if you are not buying a house and renting it then the rent you will be paying and the annual increase the initial corpus you are putting up monthly additions for the exercise i have assumed that we want to buy a house worth 1 crore for which 20 lakh is the down payment and we will be financing 80 lakh money inflation i have assumed at 6 percent per annum monthly interest rate of 1.15 percent this actually becomes 15 percent let me lower it to 1.1 percent that will be close to 13 percent return per annum monthly addition 75,000 because if you are not taking an 80 lakh loan we'll say about 75,000 per month rent let's assume for a 1 cr kind of property equivalent you will pay 20,000 per month so this calculator goes from year 1 till year 20 
rent 20,000. The base is 20 lakh, which we have invested as down payment. There are bunch of formulas, monthly interest that you will earn on the base. The rent you will pay out that will get reduced. The net amount will be added to base. The base will keep on increasing every month. So at the end of 20 years, this is becoming 5 crore 71 lakh 36,000. The rent has gone up by 8% every year. That's the rent inflation. So if you see every year, the rent increases. So by the end of 20th year, you will pay, be paying 86,000 rent which is more than 4x of what you are paying right now. Now this picture looks fine. What is wrong with it? That's because we have not accounted for inflation. We don't know what this money will be equal to in today's time value of money. So that is where we'll use this formula adjust for inflation. Yes, suddenly this drops to 2 crore 11 lakh 12,560 rupees from 5 crore 71 lakh. This is inflation adjusted number, not a very rosy number compared to what you are seeing. Most of the time what happens is the marketing material shows you 5 crore 71,000 as the absolute return which is not a wrong number but realistically if you have adjusted everything paid taxes and all this becomes 2.11 CR. Now suppose you are keeping this money in a fixed deposit then LTCG will be replaced by 33% tax. You will only end up with 1.38 crore after 20 years which is lot lower even than 2.11 crores. Also, there are some simplifications. For example, year one, there should actually be STCG, but I have used LTCG general. It is now your call whether the net money you are ending up with 2.11 CR, is that worth living a life in a rented home for 20 years? Now, the other scenario is of a simple SIP. Let's say no down payment. Monthly addition, let's say we are doing an SIP of 10,000 per month. There is no rent involved, no inflation adjustment. Rest remains same. First EMI will be 10,000, let's assume. So 10,000 per month will lead to 93,12,992 rupees before inflation adjustment. If we adjust to inflation, then we'll end up with 43,30,000 at the end of 20 years with 10,000, which means you can buy the same stuff that you are buying today using this money. Now this model could be used in multiple ways. For example, you could start with an initial corpus of 10 lakh. In that case, you will end up with 1 crore 90 lakh. That's because there is a big amount to start with which will enjoy compounding for the entire period. So if you're using compounding, SIPs help, yes. But starting with a large upfront amount is actually most beneficial. More of this will come in the systematic withdrawal plan video which I'm working on. It's running late right now, but it will release soon. Hope this information was useful. I'll see you next week on Monday. Thanks for watching.